What do you really think the most important component in a portrait is? Is it your camera? Is it your lens? Is it your subject? Is it the light? Is it the location? <laughs> Here's what I think. Hi there. Welcome back to Adventure in Art. My name is Ben Staley. And if you're new to the channel, and you probably are because the channel's pretty new, <laughs> We, uh, what we do here is we talk about all things adventure and all things art, and there's no rules, nothing's off the table, and uh, it's gonna get deeper and weirder as we go. We're gonna go down some rabbit holes. Right now we've been focusing a lot on photography, both analog and digital. Today, we're gonna talk about the Leica Q2 and my experience taking portraits with it. Now, of all the kind of photography that I practice, uh, I probably feel most comfortable with portraits. Making portraits is, you know, consistently challenging. It's endlessly rewarding. And uh, I just, I just love photographing people. I mean, let's face it, we are strange, complex, and kind of awesome creatures, most of us. <laughs> And it's just never not a challenge to get a good portrait. That's how I look at it. And you, you might have the best camera in the world. You might have the best lens. You might have the perfect light. You can't sleep on it because it's still easy to screw up. And once you've learned a few of the fundamentals and you learn a few things, it's also not that hard to get right if you've got a knack for it. But I just reached the point where I felt I felt comfortable and comfort in my mind just doesn't make for very good art. It's not the ingredient you need. And I, I wanted to, I, I wanted to disrupt my own process. I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to have to look at the world differently than through a fast 85 lens or a, you know, a fast 200 millimeter lens or 105 or whatever. We all know those portrait focal lengths, right? They're easy. You compress the subject, the background goes blurry, you get the good light, boom. I got to feeling like those long lenses were a crutch for me and I wasn't growing, I wasn't stretching, I wasn't learning. So I made a, a pretty drastic choice. I sold all my cameras. I sold a backpack full of lenses. And I bought this guy. This is a Leica Q2. <laughs> a lot of my friends who are photographers and filmmakers and know my work and know kind of how I do what I do and the equipment that I use, um, <laughs> a couple of them were kind of like, uh, Staley, are you okay? You know, that's a, that's a 28 millimeter lens. It's a 28. It doesn't come off. It's fixed. This is all you have. Yeah, I know that. And I want to try and shoot portraits with this thing. So that's what I've done. And I, I committed to it for a year and I'm just made myself a promise for my own personal work. I'm only going to use this Q2. I'm only going to use this 28 millimeter lens. Now, if I get a job or I got to go do a campaign or shoot some people, I'll rent a body, I'll figure it out. But for my personal work, this is all I get. So, I committed for a year. I'm 10 months deep. I've learned a ton. Uh, I've been frustrated. I've been inspired. And I do think my eye has changed and I've grown. Let me share some of these with you. Okay, so right after I got the Q2, I got a job in Mexico. And so I immediately went to Mexico. I hadn't really used the camera much. So here's what you're gonna see. And I'm always taking a camera with me on my jobs. I'm shooting a lot of portraits of locals and crew people and, you know, photography while I'm filming stuff is kind of my meditation. It just allows me to separate and, and be creative. There's Sam the medic. There's another portrait of Sam. He's a very handsome Mexican gentleman. All right, these are portraits of some of the crew. A lot of the stuff you're gonna see in this video is gonna be edited in black and white. A few of them will be unedited. You'll just, you'll be able to tell. And then some of them are edited color, but I like my portraits and my work to be black and white. So typically I'm editing in black and white. 
There's a wide portrait. Early on with the Q2, I learned to embrace the wider portrait and uh, started having a lot of fun with that. I love these local guys and the local faces. And they're just awesome dudes. This is the chef at the place we were staying. Cool guy. And we were staying on a coffee plantation. And so on my day off, I went and photographed uh, the guy roasting coffee beans. So I don't know if these are portraits, but it's a portrait of a coffee bean. Some shots of my old buddy Will Lyons. That's a little grainy, a little high in the ISO. It's a dark shot. And there's more of Will. I've known Will for the better part of a decade, and we've worked together a lot in some pretty crazy locations. He's a great dude. I guess Will's a good buddy, so I photographed him a lot. Sorry, Will. Hope you like these. Will has uh, just started his own YouTube channel with his wife. It's called Millennial Acres, and they just bought a farm, and they are getting it on. And uh, you should check it out because it's maybe my favorite thing on the internet. Okay, here's some shots of my wife, Danny. Now, Danny used to be a dancer, and she's an actress, and you know she's totally beautiful, but she's also a weirdo. <laughs> That's why I like her so much. And so every time I get a new camera, you know, she's the first one I experiment on. And luckily, she is down for the cause and always willing to do anything. Oh, thank you, Danny. This is Ryan. She is an L.A.-based DJ and musician. Uh, she's got a band with her husband, and she's awesome. So she showed up, and we took some pictures, and she had this crazy... Mad Max Furiosa makeup and all these rad tattoos and uh, this was early on with Q2 and I'm just figuring out how to do the wide portraits. There's a macro on her eye. Let's talk about this lens in case you don't know. The Q2 has a fixed 28mm Sumalux 1.7 lens. So it'll go to 1.7. You can still get that background separation if you like and you're close focusing. It's an amazing lens. I'm really stoked about these pictures and this is when I started realizing oh I can I can do wider portraits I can frame things up a little differently and here's my friend Milo Milo is one of my favorite photographers he is a real master he shoots analog he's got a studio in his house and he uh, invited me over and let me let me use it and I took some shots of him and then I photographed uh, my friend Reagan shot her a bunch of times over the years and she's always great Real simple portraits with natural light. This is my favorite way to work. There's my little studio. I crop these a little wider, a little more cinematic. I love that shot. This is Rachel. Rachel's a musician. She showed up with her mom and her boyfriend and uh, at this location that I call my studio. And I shoot here a lot. You'll see a lot of pictures here. Uh, we had a great time. After we were done shooting, there was a little dive bar next door and her mom insisted that we go over there and have a celebratory drink. Uh, you can't say no to mom. And uh, so there she is with her mom. And we took some, I took some pictures uh, in this little dive bar. I'm actually pretty stoked about these. This is kind of documentary type stuff. You're gonna see this one coming up, which I just freaking love. Now I love this shot and I love the big deep wide portraiture. I think this is amazing. It's one of my favorite shots with the Q2 ever. And here it is in color. I prefer the black and white. Oh, this is my old buddy Amir. He's my assistant cameraman when I can afford to get him. We've been all over the world in some crazy places together. Here we are in a ramen restaurant in Portland. A little tungsteny. There he is in an apple orchard. That's just right out of the camera. That's what it looks like. I love the colors right out of this camera, better than any digital camera I've ever used. And there's a black and white edit of a different shot, maybe a little heavy handed on the edit, but uh, I like it. There's a Q2 portrait. Here's a little piglet portrait. That's just uh, natural colors right out of the camera. There's a barista in Portland. That's my friend Lucy in Portland. I don't know if that's a portrait, but look at that sky. There's Nate, he's a tattoo artist, he gave me a tattoo. That's in his studio, and that's a little tighter shot. This is Lindsay, I photographed her a few times. She is a screenwriter. This is Sophia, she's a playwright and an actress. Uh, we walked around downtown and took some shots, just kind of on the street, documentary style, no frills. 
pretty stoked about these shots actually. Wide portraits, wide portraits. I have learned with the Q2 to sometimes just hunt around and kind of discover the right angle. That's the one, that's my favorite. This is Yulia, I'm using a strobe actually overhead in my studio. Uh, she is from Russia and she uh, is a former model and now she's an actress. I photograph Yulia a lot, she's great to work with. Really cool lady. And here's a crop in, black and white. I really like these. A lot of emotion. This is my old buddy Todd. He comes to California not every couple of years and we go rock climbing. Todd's more family than a friend. This is Trina at the old LA Zoo. I photographed her a few times. Cool lady. I like these. Kind of dark, really moody. I guess that's what I do. All natural light. This is Riel, and again, I am just kind of hunting around for a composition, trying to find an angle that works. It's, for me, it's been a learning process to figure out how to close photograph faces with the 28, um, just for the most flattering, most pleasing look. And uh, so I'm, I'm moving around a lot, I'm trying things, and that's the one, that's the one I like. Here's some wider shots of Riel with a strobe overhead in the studio. I like these. I don't know if these are technically portraits. There's a crop in. I like that a lot. I like the contrast. Riel had just moved to LA and she showed up in a U-Haul van. So of course we're gonna use that as a set. And this is my friend Emily. She's from Alaska. She's a gold miner. I was teaching Emily how to lead climb on a pretty easy sport route. And there's a portrait of Emily afterwards having a beer and cooling off. That's my friend Big Rob. We do kettlebell and jujitsu together. There's Mike in Death Valley in my tent. This is Carly. Photographed Carly a ton over the years. She's one of my favorite people to photograph. She's hilarious. We have a lot of laughs. She's very expressive. She is down to get weird and just do whatever. And uh, I like that. I like people who are brave and who just want to experiment and who want to find things. I'm really stoked about these Q2 portraits of Carly. It's just about moving around, being free, being open and experimenting with compositions. All those were just taken in a stairwell. And Carly had her friend latch me with her, so I, of course I had to photograph her. She's got these super pretty eyes. <laughs> and this doggy showed up. Some more portraits in my studio, working with different angles, trying to find it. And this is our dog, Charity. She hates having her picture taken, but too bad. Uh, that's Suzanne Santo of the band Honey Honey. I love these wide portraits. She's kind of a rock star. That's just right out of the camera, no edit, not bad. Here's my friend Bonnet, he's a great photographer. We went and shot pictures out of the Salton Sea together. We're having breakfast in a diner. There's Danny in a ramen restaurant in West Hollywood. This guy makes barbecue, gotta get a portrait. This guy is in Africa, that's Namibia. That's my friend David, we're having lunch. Shout out to the Wild Yard Project. David was curious about my camera, so he took my picture. David's a great photographer. There's John, John's a filmmaker and a surfer. This guy is on an island out in the Atlantic Ocean. He's a local. And here's some shots of some crew members. I was doing a job out there. Again, just snapping portraits on the fly. Locals and crew people love these. I love the, the 28. You can really get some creative angles. I think that's a cool portrait. I, it's a portrait of my book. This guy was a boat driver. Awesome dude. Hilarious. Look at these faces. 
These guys are just so warm, so friendly. Look at that face. This is my favorite kind of portraiture to do. And I, I think the Q2 just works awesome for it. <laughs> There's Clement looking a little suspicious. Local crew member. He's talking on his walkie-talkie. Bossing somebody around. I love these. I love these documentary portraits. This guy was on one of the boats. He just had that cool tattoo. So I'm like, dude, I got to take your picture. Here's a baboon portrait from Namibia. I dig it. This is Sai. She is an LA based uh, dancer. And uh, I'm, I just start wide just to kind of figure it out. Get, get an understanding of the light and then I'll move in and try and find a good composition for a closer portrait. Getting closer and I just move around, just see what she does, try and find an angle that I like. Boom, I dig that. She's got cool eyes. And this is Christy, another dancer. This is some of my, some of my favorite portraits, very close, very moody. I love these shots. Some of my favorites. You can do it, folks. You can take portraits with the Q2. For me, it's taken, it's taken a little bit of experimentation. It's been a learning process, but I dig it. And that's it. Some gnome portraits to close us out. Okay, so I hope that gives you maybe a little clearer idea of what's actually possible with a Q or any 28 millimeter lens or perhaps a wider focal length. You know, you just, you just have to start looking at the world differently and I do that now and that's what I wanted. And I'm not gonna say that sometimes I'm just hungry for an 85 or a 200 where I can just go and I know what I'm gonna get. But I've really, really loved working with that camera and carrying it around. I mean, it's it's all I have, right? I don't have a backpack full of lenses. It's this, it's this light. I can take it anywhere. There's no choice. I'm stuck with this lens and I'm learning how to use it and I'm learning what I can do creatively. So it's cool. But let's, uh, while it's on my mind, what do you really think the most important component in a portrait is? Is it your camera? Is it your lens? Is it your subject? Is it the light? Is it the location? <laughs> Here's what I think. The most important component in a portrait is you and your connection to the subject. Think about that. We humans, as I said before, are complex creatures and we have what five basic senses, sight, smell, hearing, touch, and taste. That's how we interact with the world. And that's how we interact with each other. I mean, we don't taste everybody, but we do taste some people and it informs our opinions of them. <laughs> that's a whole different video. Um, but consider this, we have senses that uh, will go unnamed, that we are not consciously aware of, that we don't have names for, but we're using constantly, right? That weird little tickling feeling, that vibration, right? A certain person walks in the room and you can feel their presence. They don't have to say anything. Maybe they're across the room. Maybe you can't smell them, you can't hear them or anything, but they, they vibrate in a certain way. You vibrate in a certain way. You have your own unique frequency. It's sort of like a, like a fingerprint, right? And other people can feel that frequency and they can feel that vibration. And now the base frequency is the same, but the vibration can change. If you're freaked out because you just got like an awesome assignment and you're going to go uh, do a big portrait campaign and you're, you know, you've got a nice expensive camera, you've got a nice expensive lens, but you're like, whoa, this is the biggest job I've ever got. I've got to nail this. You're probably vibrating, right? Most people are going to be able to feel that and they're going to know it. Even if you're playing it cool, they're going to know it. The key to making good portraits, and let me just throw this out there. You can accidentally make good portraits. The key to consistently making good portraits is to control your vibration, control your frequency, and sometimes only in the matter of a few seconds, establish 
some kind of connection with the subject you're shooting. And it might not be a friendly connection. It might be a hostile connection. It might be, boom, spur of the moment. And I'm not talking about boom, 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 street photography. I'm talking one-on-one. -on -one. It's an exchange. You might only have two seconds. It's still an exchange. The value of that portrait is determined by your connection to the subject. I'm going to get deeper into that later in another video because it's something I've thought about for years and it's, it's, um, it's something I really believe. But for now, that's just a taste. I hope you like this video. Uh, if, uh, if you haven't already, just give it a like. It helps with the, the whole uh, algorithm, uh, algorithm thing, I guess. Um, appreciate it if, you, if you'd subscribe if you haven't already. I feel weird asking this stuff. It's like the, the tuber stuff that you got to do. And uh, I'm not so keen on it, but I'm doing it. I'm trying to be a good tuber. Um, I've got some more pretty cool stuff coming up uh, that I think you're going to dig if you like this video. So appreciate you stopping by. Leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on any of this stuff. I love to have discussions. At the end of the day, I like talking about this stuff and I'd like to talk about it with you. So let's interact. Let me know what you think. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next one.